Chapter 1, Getting Started When I originally decided to visit South America, it was only supposed to be a two-month trip spanning across Peru, Chile, Argentina, and Brazil. When I actually arrived in South America, I decided to turn two months into a year, and I didn't even visit half of the places I originally planned on seeing. The thing with traveling is plans change and most of the pre-planning I did before leaving never came to fruition. Instead, I had other interesting adventures. Now, I have the time to visit places I originally planned and a ton of places I didn't plan. Still, there are things I did plan for before leaving that every person needs to consider when budgeting for their trip. These items don't change and are true for everyone, no matter where you're from or where you're traveling to. Before you begin your trip, weigh a few options when choosing your destination. How much you spend will vary greatly on where you go and how long you're there. So do a little research before you settle on one place. I ignorantly assumed because I was traveling from the States to South America, everything would be dramatically cheaper. In a lot of places, this turned out to be true, but in many places like Rio de Janeiro or Buenos Aires, Food and drinks cost as much as they do back home. Still, traveling through South America for a few months turned out to be much cheaper than traveling through Europe for the same amount of time. This is why you'll need to carefully pick your destination. That's not to say that you cannot still save tons of money if you have your heart set on a more expensive country or area if you hadn't followed these tips. Just know that in the long run, it may cost a little bit more than if you had visited a more inexpensive place, like many countries in Asia, for example. Time is the other big factor. This may be an obvious statement, but sometimes it's so obvious, people don't consciously consider it before booking a trip. Two weeks requires far less money than a month. How you spend that time also impacts finances. For example, when I landed in South America, I plan to visit four different countries and multiple cities within those countries. They weren't close to each other. In fact, they were on opposite corners of the continent. This meant more money for transportation than if I had just picked one area and stuck to it. I made a decision to spend the extra money anyway because this might be the only opportunity I had to visit a place. That alone made it worth the extra money for me, but this is only a decision you can make. There's no right or wrong answer, but do think about it carefully before making a decision one way or the other. I willingly accepted the extra money I'd need to hop across a continent, but again, only you can decide if that's worth it. Every trip is unique, and there are certain things you'll learn about the place you have decided to visit when you get there. There may be discounts available for certain things, unique to the country you travel to, and the best way to find these comes from talking to locals. Still, many of the discounts and tips you'll find here can be found in most places in the world. If you're leaving the country, make sure to research any visas or fees you'll need to pay when entering your country. When I arrived in Argentina, I didn't need a visa or a prior paperwork before landing, but I did need to pay 160 US dollars when I went through customs. I now have a sticker in my passport that allows me to enter and leave Argentina free for the next 10 years. But still, it was a large lump sum I had to plan for when entering. Don't be surprised by these fees. Read about the country you're visiting so you know roughly how much you'll need to pay to get there. These fees change depending on your native country. The entry fee I paid for Argentina only applied to American, Canadian, and Australian citizens. If I had been from any other country besides those three, I wouldn't have paid to enter Argentina. I knew all this before coming down to South America because I used the U.S. Department of State website. Here, I found a list of travel warnings for the countries I was visiting, a little about the culture and fees or visas I needed to enter the country. Check your country's official travel pages to learn about these things and how they will affect you as a foreigner traveling. The worst thing that can occur budget-wise is a surprise fee you didn't plan on paying beforehand. 
visas proved to be more of a hassle because I had to apply for them before leaving. They also required a lot more things like proof of plans to leave the country, an airline or bus ticket will suffice, and proof of where I was staying. I applied for my Brazilian visa while I was in Argentina because until then, I still hadn't booked an airline ticket to leave. Again, this cost 160 US dollars. The time it takes to apply for visas is also important. It proved to be only a couple of days for me to receive my visa to Brazil, but I know many people from other countries where it takes several months and requires some important information like bank account statements and recent paychecks. For many of my friends in South America who want to visit the U.S., the process to apply for a visa is long and oftentimes denied. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of tips I can provide here. If your country's citizens are charged a flat fee to enter a country, you have to pay it. You won't find discounts for students or senior citizens in this particular expense. One thing you can look into is whether that fee is charged in every border control point in the country. If I had entered Argentina by land, in other words, from another country by bus, I wouldn't have needed to pay that fee it was only charged at the international airport. Unfortunately, I had no choice but to fly, as that large mountain range known as the Andes blocked my route from Lima to Buenos Aires. That may not be the case for you. If not, you can save yourself a decent amount of money by possibly flying into a different country that doesn't charge anything and taking a bus or train across the border. One last fee you'll need to cover before leaving is your passport. Again, this may seem obvious, but don't forget about it. It can take weeks or months to process a passport and costs a big chunk of change. The moment you decide to plan an international trip is the exact moment you should apply for your passport if you don't already have one. If you have any type of ID card that provides you discounts in your native country, such as student ID, bring that with you. I used my student ID in almost every city I visited, and it saved me a ton of money on random everyday things. Always ask to see if these discounts are available. Oftentimes, they are not posted or obvious, but businesses still offer them. Look into these items the second you decide to travel. Waiting may mean you need to pay more for rushed processing fees, if that's even a viable option. Once you have these big items out of the way, you're ready to start finding discounts that will save you tons of money as you embark on the adventure of a lifetime.